I had a conversation with a friend not too long ago about, you know, moving your small pieces and stuff and small change and stuff and how things affect. I just, how many times are we going to allow um, white people to control the narrative of what needs to be moving forward and what is justice and what is this and what is progressiveness? What is all that? Like for someone who's, who's at the top of the food chain, I've been told and I've started to believe and I believe strongly that we take care of the people at the bottom Everybody else at the top would be good, but you know, that's not what we're doing. Um, that's just not what we're doing. We all have our foot on somebody's neck. How quickly we were able to throw Omarosa away. Omarosa's still trash, she's done some trash stuff. Isaiah Banks has done some trash stuff. Um, she has said some things. Um, she got her ass handed to her on, on Wild and Out. They ate her ass alive. She had stage fright. She was scared to death. But if Isaiah Banks talks about colorism and, and an effect on her or whatever happened, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to understand her first and then I move forward. One colorist comment, yes, Isaiah Banks has said someone looks like a tar baby. Yes, she has said that. But I don't believe that one colorist comment cancels out another colorist comment. Like, I just, that doesn't work like that. So just because she said something colorist, somebody else can say something no. Like, both of them are trash and both of them will be dealt with accordingly. Yes, Azalea Banks has some issues. She has some stuff. Yes, Omarosa and Garvey, like all these folks are trash. Like all of them. But if they say some things, I'm going to listen. I am more inclined to listen to a black person than I am a white person. I'm automatically listening, trying to understand what happened. Azalea Banks has been hurt. She has been, I, there's no telling what things she has experienced in her time, how many times she's been, you know, questioned for just being an artist who is, you know, dark skin. I, there's no, I, mean, it's, it, I don't know. But at the same time, I'm looking at Zay Banks like she was supposed to be on that Wild Out episode. She was supposed to be cutting up. You be dragging on Twitter. You be dragging on Instagram. You be going in. But girl, you got up there and got stage fright, and I don't know what happened. And I feel like Nick Cannon was trying to root for you, sis. He was rooting for. He was like walking his child and let his child walk for the first time and say, "Come on, you got it." And like he tried to take the trainer reels off, and you just rolled on down the hill and collapsed. Like I felt bad for you, Zay Banks, but at the same time, I did not feel bad for you. Uh, like, girl, it just made me think about how many of you all are online are funny when it tweets in Instagram videos, but when it comes to being live, you just cannot produce that same effect. So that's interesting. That's where I come in at. Um, but that's hilarious as hell. Um, now, do I feel like that DC Young Fly's comment was colorist? I think it, it can be, you know, brought up a little bit. I think it's, I, I kind of believe it a little bit. Um, do I think it was just a joke? Yeah, probably, probably so. But they want, like I said before, um, jokes at one point were blackface, uh, were folks dressing up with uh, pink, um, big red lips and um, big noses and stuff. That was comedy. You look at some of the, the stuff that Disney has produced, some of that shit was jo like jokes and content at one point. So we're always, you know, changing and evolving. Comedians were making jokes about queer people, trans women, trans men, all that. We're always evolving. Even me as whatever you want to call me, telling jokes, I have to evolve. There's some things I said were questionable, especially my Real Housewives Atlanta reviews on Kenya. I couldn't stand her at one point. Some of the things I said about Kenya Moore were misogynistic, um, and I, I, I really had to like that's trash as fuck. I need to do better. I need to find a way to tell jokes when it's not, you know, directly offending somebody. And that's that's the life of a comedian. Like you're gonna always evolve and learn how to make people laugh without necessarily. That's why I appreciate the first joke when the guy was talking about, you know, her talent and he don't, she don't want to disrupt, she don't want Nick Cannon to uh, infect her or whatever. I felt like that was funny, but some jokes, you know, like that's what we do. That's that what makes the comedian different from everybody else because they're able to evolve and be creative with their joke and just not put out these lazy ass reads. But you know, some people have said DC Young Fly tells jokes like it can cause everybody ugly ass and all that type of stuff. But we know as Eddie Banks has had conversation about colorism and Cardi B and how she's been able to be successful because of this. And then you say ugly ass and then Isaiah Banks. So Isaiah Banks is only hearing ugly ass and she's seen a light skinned woman who's been able to progress because of her color of her skin. Like I know some folks are like, that's not what it happened. That's not what it happened. That's not what happened. That's, what happened. that's a lot of shit that you probably don't understand. Your ass didn't understand math at one point. You didn't understand how to divide. You didn't understand how, because I still don't know how to do fucking adding fractions, subtracting fractions. But if you listen, 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 listen to understand first, maybe you'll get it. So don't come in and being dismissive automatically. Come in and try to receive it. Then try to apply what you feel. But some of us are not doing that. We're automatically dismissing it, period. And then we don't understand why, 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 why can I connect with other folks? Because you're trash and you're not listening to anybody else and you only think about yourself. But that's a conversation we'll be talking about on For The Culture Podcast as well. So make sure you stay in tune. Nicki Minaj, I'm so glad I'm not talking about you that much today, girl. You know, you got some stuff going on. We praying for you. Sabrina! 
to freedom. <laughs> Girl, they've been dragging your ass from here to freedom, okay? Y'all know last week or whatever, um, Nicki Minaj kind of compared herself to um, Harriet Tubman. And it's just hilarious as hell because now Lauren Hill has responded to Robert Glasper and essentially said, you know, the same thing, like I I'm Harriet Tubman, like something like that. But uh, Nicki Minaj, I'm glad that, you know, you signed up this, this Queen Radio then turned into the Queen's Court. Um, and that's exactly what it is. I think it's funny, but I think you need to watch it. But that freedom shit has me, like that shit has me screaming. Um, but it really does. But you know, Lauren Hills has responded to Robert Glasper in a full, long ass, uh, medium uh, written piece. Girl, she wrote the shit out of that. And she essentially dragged the shit out of him. She said she is an artist. She's out here doing the work and that everybody ain't gonna understand her. And then she talked about massage a little bit. She said that, yes, for me as a artist, a woman, female, black artist, telling folks how I want things, it's going to be looked at it, I'm being an asshole versus a man, you know, doing it, it's completely different. That's something Nicki Minaj has talked about it. I definitely do want to listen to when women say their experiences in the industry and people not take them serious. Even in the military, I saw how that works and stuff, how, you know, women have to be extra, whatever, because if they're just okay, they're gonna be looked at as weak because they're already a woman, period. Like, we have to understand how a woman, um, Senator, Congresswoman or whatever, you know, how, you know, even Hillary Clinton wasn't able to wear like dresses and high heels and stuff because you'll be looking at them like this is feminine energy, this don't need to be in here, like this is not power and stuff. But these folks are bringing humans into the world, it's something a man can never do. So yes, I agree with Lauren Hill. Um, you need to check out the whole, the whole article, the whole thing she wrote. It was good. She talked about some things. Now she do seem like she got the big head, but it's a lot of other folks like Ooh, we're going to be talking about it on the podcast, honey. Make sure y'all stay in tune. This episode of For The Coach Podcast is going to be lit as fuck, honey. I want to end this King of Reads TV video talking about this trash-ass Coretta Scott King skit that Cardi B did. So as you all seen on kingofreads.com, Cardi B thought it was going to be cute to do a um, The Real Housewives of the Civil Movement um, skit on um, Off The Rip. Some type of TMZ skit they're doing with, you know, um, the guy from... What is the name of Wild and Out? Uh, Rip Michaels, R.I.P. Michaels. They did a skit. They had Malcolm X's wife on there. They had Jesse Jackson's wife. Cardi B played Coretta Scott King. Um, and it was so cringy. Um, I just, Cardi B, that shit was just not acceptable at all. That shit was dangerous. It was trash as fuck. And I can tell you that you did not think. I don't know if that's something that Atlantic told your ass to do, but that shit was disrespectful. Dr. Bernice King, the youngest child of Martin Luther King, um, you know, released a statement, said that she ain't feeling that shit at all. And, you know, coming up on the anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech, uh, that Martin Luther King gave, um, you know, on Washington that March, like she said, girl, this this ain't it. Like this ain't the tea, this ain't the time. And that shit was disrespectful. So apparently Cardi B and TMZ did apologize. And um, she said she would be talking to both of them. Basically she would be talking to Cardi B. Um, I just think that shit was not cute at all. Like I just, I don't know. Um, you know, Cardi B did her whole etiquette spin on it in the articles on kingofreads.com, like I said. And it just wasn't like they talked about Mark, they talked about Martin Luther King's um, you know, infidelity rumors and all that type of stuff. And I just, I just did not think it was just like some stuff was like, eh, I don't know. And you can do like some jokes tasteful or whatever. I don't know how you, I just don't know how to explain it. But it just, I don't know. It just, it, it just was not creative and it was not fucking funny. It was very lazy and it was very trash as fuck. Um, I think that Cardi B knew it was trash. That's why she apologized. And y'all need to do better. First of all, let's talk about this. The fact that the fucking TMZ even has something to do with this shit is even more telling. I don't trust TMZ to be doing any type of, y'all stay y'all ass away from civil rights. Completely stay away from black folks. Y'all already do a good job dragging them shits on y'all on y'all damn website and shit. And, and girl, we know y'all ass aligned with Trump too. So girl, psh, <laughs> like, girl, stay away. Stay away from me with that bullshit. Also, special shout out to my girl, Kayla Lumpkins. She is a staff writer for kingofreads.com. I want to appreciate for her, all the work that she has done in the last week. She has made sure that so much content has been added to kingofreads.com. And also, shout out to my other girl, Miss Taryn. I appreciate all the help that I'm getting over at kingofreads.com. Make sure if you are interested that you email me at hello at kingofreads.com. I love y'all so much. Y'all make sure y'all enjoying y'all week and make sure you're checking out the newest episode of Further Culture Podcast. Podcast on for the culture podcast.com and I'll talk y'all hoes later on tonight. Bye. Fuck you looking at bitch.